Thank you, Kay, for coming on the show. Thank you, Eugene. Thanks for inviting. So, so exciting. I remember uh, I saw you on Facebook a few months ago, or maybe earlier this year, right? Earlier this year? Uh, earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. And I was first very uh, captured by this word called immigration people because, mm. I mean, if you call yourself graphic designer or or model or <laughs> <laughs> or any other thing, it is quite common. But I've, I've honestly not heard Immigration. Oh, immigration consultant, right? Yeah, yeah it's like, I, I don't know why it does. Can you share a little bit first? What, what does it do? Okay, so uh, immigration consultant, which means it's just like insurance consultants. Mm -hmm. So we advise our clients, you know, how they can achieve their residency status in Singapore. So oh. our target audience majority are people who have been living here for some time and they right. love Singapore and they love to make Singapore their permanent home. Right. We them how they can actually achieve their residency status so we help them with their PR and citizenship application in Singapore well it is that's it's quite meaningful right. hold on uh, uh, I'm going to do some logistics uh, currently it is already on my timeline yeah can you go on and share and then it will be on your timeline also yeah okay yes. yeah Let and then at the same time I'll be sharing in uh, a few different groups that I run we are going online. Okay. Ah, okay. But you need to uh silence it so that there's no uh, audio feedback. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me share in a few groups. So just now what we heard from Kay is that immigration consultants help uh, people who already are in Singapore to go through certain uh, procedure, I suppose. Right? Yes, like, definitely. Yeah. Like, like uh, talking to ICA and whatever other ministries that that you know. Right, yeah. And then you advise them. Yes, that's right. So what we do is that, uh, you know, based on their profile, we advise them what they can do to improve their chances. Hmm. We help them to put in uh, additional documents to make their profile more outstanding and okay. uh, more likely that they will get picked up by ICA, that they are the perfect fit to be a PR or citizenship uh, right. to yeah, to be a PR and citizenship residence in Singapore. Okay, uh, let, let's imagine I am uh, mainland Chinese. Just imagine. Uh. Okay, although, although <laughs> I'm born in Singapore, okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, some people say I look like from China anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's say uh, I contacted you. Yeah. Okay? And then I say like, hey, I, I want to stay here with my family. Mm. You know, what, what would be some advice that you want to give me? Uh, first, I would definitely like to understand your main objective because mm. everyone has different objectives in Singapore. Some, yeah. they will just be very happy with holding on to a valid work pass. Mm. Some, they are very, very clear that they want to achieve residency status. So depending on what your objective and depending on your current situation, situation how mm. well off you are okay how you know wealthy you okay, are okay let's talk about well off huh? uh because it's so relative for mm. a foreigner in singapore how, how much do they need to earn before they can even consider residency okay there are actually many ways to apply for permanent residency in singapore and one of it will be through the global investor program oh. where you need to put in two and a half million hmm. in Singapore. Be rupiah, rupiah or Thai baht? Which one? <laughs> Singapore dollars. <laughs> <laughs> rupiah, it would be so easy. Well, two point five million dollars. Clients, yeah. Two and a half million dollars. But before that, right? That is a tricky part. You have to have a business with with two hundred million Sing dollar turnover. If let's say uh, Eugene, like overnight, I buy Toto and I got you no know, 4D or whatever, Toto, yeah. you know, two and a half millions, I yeah. can't just park into Singapore. I must have a business track record with 200 million Sing dollar turnover revenue per annum. Then I can try to apply. For the first three years, is it? How many years uh, running? Three years, three oh, years. Three years, three years. Uh, then I can uh, apply through this global investment. Okay, that's true. Okay. So if, if the person doesn't meet all these, what, any alternative, Rob? Alternative will be, we will help them with setting up the business in Singapore and oh. then we will advise them how much paid up capital they should have and they should apply for a work pass under their own company, being mm. a director 
better, right? And after being in after being in Singapore for one to two years, mm. then we will help them to apply for residency status. Of course, if you go through this route, right, it is not a guarantee approval. It's yes. case basis. Okay. Uh, since you say it's not guaranteed, right? I don't know whether I'm allowed to ask this, but how many percent roughly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a very good question, Eugene, because yeah. that is a favorite question right, that my client loves to ask me. Kay, tell me how many percent of success rate. Yeah. So for me, right, I would like to take a look at your profile before I give you a percentage because right. there are many factors that will influence the success of a PR and citizenship application. Like example, your age, how long you've been here, what's mm. your highest qualifications, which mm. industry you are in. So yeah. I'm Influence. So right now, you know, I can't make any assumption because Eugene, honestly, I've known you for a while, but I don't know your age. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you my age, my industry, uh, everything. Lah, okay? okay? Yeah, of course, I'm going to make it up. Make it up. Yeah. So I I am uh, actually, I'm 32 now. 32. 32? No way. You're younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm going to make it up. Make it up. Yeah. So I'm 32. I'm mainland Chinese. Uh, let's say I have a wife, I have a young son who is six years old. Yeah, and I'm in the finance industry. Let's say. Excellent profile. Excellent profile, Eugene. You're in the right age group. You're in the prime working age. Your family are here. Everyone is here applying together. Hmm. You're in a good industry hmm. whereby it aligned with the country directions, you know, hmm. right now. Yeah, we always need finance talent, okay? Hmm. And because of your age and many other factors, actually, I would say your chances is not over-promising, maybe <laughs> 70%. Wow! <laughs> okay, okay. Honestly, okay, okay. Um, it, at the immigration people, right, we don't like to talk about success rate because today, yeah, yeah. we can over-promise you of 99%, but there is still uh, 1% up to ICA. Oh. So, at the immigration people, we do not like to overpromise. Yeah, mm -hmm. we will give our client a really honest feedback about their real chances of approval after we evaluate their profile. Wow, yeah, I, I like that. Very, very professional. Very professional. Hey, let's talk about our team for a while because I, I've seen a few of you on, on Facebook and, and all that. Yeah, where, where, where did they come from? Are they all from the airline industry? Let's say? No, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, my team, right, uh, majority of us, we have at least one to two years experience in immigration. Oh. So, honestly speaking, oh. um, majority of us are in the same industry, some working for competitors. Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. there was another immig immigration consulting company, which mm -hmm. some of you work for. Because uh, some of them, you know, they have been working in other company and they are not so happy. Of course, not all. I don't want to tell the name also. And <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Of course. We're looking for people who are aligned with the company direction. Integrity yeah. is very important. So yeah. we want to, it, to be able to give our client a really honest feedback about their real chances. Some mm. of our uh, colleague, right? Okay, they used to work with some company. They overpromise and under deliver, so they yeah. are in a lot of pressure and they are not happy. So they're mm. very happy. Honest, yeah. Wow, it yeah, is good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So you are the only one who came from the airline industry. Yes, that's right. Oh, okay, okay, because quite a number of you look quite good, like uh, on the poster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mei Tu Xiu Xiu. You know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I come to think of it, I haven't met you in real person yet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I hope I don't get a shock when I meet you. Yeah. <laughs> you won, you won. Okay, very good, very good. Hey, so you were in um SIA, is it? Or which which airline? Uh, Singapore Airlines. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, very good, very good. No wonder you look a bit familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you met me on board before. Yeah, probably, probably. Oh, so you wouldn't have recognized me, you know. I used to have really short hair. Oh. So your stewardess self is short hair and then after you left, became long hair. Yeah, that's what right. What's the reason? Ah? Okay, um, a secret of me, I, I'm very bad in, you know, uh, making up, tying my hair. I'm really bad at it. Yeah, so okay. to make it easier, okay, I, I rather have short hair. So I all along, I had pixie. I saw there are people laughing, you know, Jeremy. <laughs> 
Jeremy laughing. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is this is something on the side, uh, Eugene. So my sister is opposite of me. She's really good in all this, you know, makeup, oh. tying hair. And there was once in front of the mirror, t- she teach me how to braid my hair. And at the end, right, I, my hand got twisted, not my hand. <laughs> I was like, sorry, how are you doing this? <laughs> so you and your sister, is it? Just just two of you. Sister, yes. I think your sister is the more like feminine one and dress up in floral skirt, all that. Yeah, that's and right. And then you're uh, what the, the pot, tomboyish one, is it? Yeah, yes. Really? Uh, I, I can't tell, I can't tell. Because I, I don't know your sister, but you you are very feminine to me. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what was it? S I A? Was it SIA that uh, somehow trained you to be so feminine? No? Yes, yes. I Honestly speaking, I think I did learn a lot when I was flying. Yeah, it did uh, ex- expose myself that, oh, I can be feminine as well. <laughs> so how, how long did it take before you felt, wow, you know, I've arrived at the, the model of feminineness? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... I, I don't want to be so shameless, uh, but... Uh, oh, I'll be shameless for you. <laughs> okay, I, I think maybe um, when I first joined, right, I, I went through the training, you know, and I started to learn about a service language, how to speak softly, and that's oh. where maybe um, one or two years, I started to discover the feminine self of mine. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, be, can, can you show us a little bit what you were like before the training? <laughs> Actually, people will be very surprised to know that there was a period of time whereby I dress up like a man, I had short hair. <laughs> yeah, and, and no, you don't want to see that. You'll be very surprised. I'm sure you have photos, right? You have photos. No, no, no. I deleted oh, all. Really? Uh, yeah, all the ways. Okay. Bad <laughs> memories. It'll be fun to have before after. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as you know. So last time you were quite uh, boyish. And then, why did you even go for something so feminine like stewardess? Why don't you go for a boyish career? Okay, it was my dream to be a stewardess because I actually came from a below average family. So, traveling around the world has been my biggest dream. Oh. I have never traveled around the world before. I've never gone onto an aeroplane before in my whole life. Yeah. Until, so, until what age? Until, okay, now, very funny thing is uh, my first experience riding on a plane was when I was a, um, uh, when I went for my national service with in, in Malaysia. Is that such a thing? Yeah, they are. I didn't know for girls also. Yes, it's for guy and girl. And, and it's for just a very short period of time. And then oh. government thinks that, okay, it's useless. So they have to it. <laughs> Short time is what? Three months? Six months? No, no, no. Um, I think maybe a few years they had this national service for, for uh, you know, Malaysian residents. Yeah, I was very lucky to get selected. So I flew to Sabah. So it was sponsored. It was fully sponsored by the government. So that's the first time where I sat on the aeroplane and I got so excited. Like, okay, I, I want to really, you know, travel more. I want to see the world. Yeah, so that's the reason why I joined Cabin Crew. And that was normal plane or military plane? Oh, no, 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 normal plane. Oh, so you can sit down and eat one? Uh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and you went to Sabah for, for what? Forest training? Jungle for training. service for three months. Oh, so the camp was in Sabah? Yes. What's okay. the thing? <laughs> okay. You're laughing at me. Sorry, our national service is nothing like Singapore national service, okay? So, <laughs> yeah. So first of all, in Singapore, I don't think women serve. Yeah. I think I'm not don't, sure. have, don't have, don't have. Women go straight to poly or to uni. O- only men serve. I have served before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So that's the first time you sat on a plane. And yeah. then after that, you decided. Old, I was 18. 18, right? 18, yeah. Then the very next time where you sat on a plane was what age? When I was flying then. But when oh. I was flying with Singapore Airlines, yeah. Wow. And do you remember your very first flight? As a professional stewardess, where, where do you go? A, I I remember I did this a Melbourne flight. Wow, it's so exotic. Okay. Uh, Melbourne, I I went. Yeah. <laughs> <It was very laughs> what is this? Sinla is also stewardess, is it? 
Oh, I'm not sure, Zena. Oh. Yeah, I need. Hello. How about rain? Is rain related to SIA? No, it's not. Oh, no, yeah, no. Okay. It's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, I said women can sign on. Yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, so your second time was to Melbourne, right? Mm. Did you still remember the feeling? Can, can you describe a little bit? You know, as you were there wearing the kebaya, right, serving. You know, how do you feel? Very excited. Yeah, I was uh, very excited, you know, to be flying and then people are looking mm. and then I get to go to uh, places where I'm not familiar and I have my own time to actually explore. It was very, very excited. Yeah, I believe right now, right, people, anyone who is flying with Singapore Airlines, they still, they still find the excitement of going through a new place, discovering a very different, like yeah. different... Exploration, different. exploration. Hey, sorry, uh, if you don't mind, your, your phone can put silent or not. <laughs> because a lot of people message you, I think. Right. I can hear a lot of sound. <laughs> yeah. Rain, Rain says she was from SIA, but as a passenger. Very funny. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, so you felt excited. Okay, uh, and five years, right? You, you were writing to me. Five years in SIA. Five years. From oh. year 2011 till 2017. Six. Okay, so I know you went to Melbourne. Anywhere else that you felt very excited one? That you first first time there and you wanted to explore the city? Uh, for me, right, I'm always a person who loves sightseeing. So I enjoy going to places whereby I can go to see some nice scenery. Not so much of shopping type of person. Yep. You know, buying Chanel, all these are not my type of thing. So... Right. My favorite place will always be like places like um example like Switzerland. Wow. I, uh, one of my wow. favorite places, New Zealand. Wow, nice. And so all these are my you know, I, I love it. <laughs> it's not, uh, okay, obviously I've never been a stewardess. So <laughs> when, when you reach New Zealand, how, how long do you have to explore before you have to take the flight back? Hey, if your flight is longer than 10 hours, oh. normally you will have a, I would say maybe two hours. Is there two, two days? Oh, two, two days, <laughs> two, hours. Two, hours. two hours cannot explore already. Two days to explore. So it's yeah. very short also. Fine, yeah. Nah, it's fine actually. Oh, it's quite, okay, okay. Then you go out with your, your colleagues, lah, right? Hmm. And go sightseeing, museum, take picture with statue, and then quickly run back to the plane again on the third day. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then you all have to share room or can have a single room? We have a single room. Oh, so good. Uh. It's a policy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last time in the bank, right? My business trip, all my share room one, you know? No. I think um, at least four stars, single room. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, really good life, good life. Did you don't be a steward up? Why, why, why? <laughs> don't, I, I'm 44 years old. I'm overweight. There's no way I can be a steward. <laughs> and, and my eyesight is horrible, so I also cannot be a pilot. No, you uh, can. You can just put on a contact lens. It's fine. Oh, I see. I see. I, I do have a lot of pilot friends, uh, and they are, they are, yeah, they are, they are quite happy. The, the the cargo plane pilots are very happy. The commercial plane pilots not so happy. What? This, this year, this year, this year. Oh, this year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I got a friend who is a cargo plane pilot and obviously he wasn't very happy, but he became very happy this year <laughs> because completely not affected at all. Yeah, okay. A a any, uh, okay, this is a bit inappropriate because you're married. Right now. Yeah, but any crushes on pilots, you know, last time, five years when you were flying? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, don't bluff lah. Five years as a stewardess, I'm sure there were some very suave, Tom Cruise looking kind of pilots. <laughs> Tom Cruise, come on. No, never. Never. Yeah, yeah, so sad. Okay. <laughs> because uh, uh, the truth is that Eugene, we are kind of separated. So cabin crew will be talking to cabin crew. So I'm actually more closer to cabin crew instead of oh. tech crew. So that's the reason why, you know, uh, it, it doesn't happen. It, it did not happen, yeah. I thought sometimes, the maybe I watch too many movies. Uh, I thought the pilot will purposely come and talk to you. No. Are you sure? Hey, you swore to secrecy, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. 
<laughs> don't have, don't have. Okay, okay. I still have that cool friend, you know. I don't want them to kill me after this. <laughs> okay, okay. Some secrets shall remain secrets. Whatever uh happens in SIA stays in SIA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I watch a lot of airplane movies, you know. And then there's one called Flight. F-L-I-G-H-T. It's starring Denzel Washington, where he was uh like alcoholic and flying a plane. True story, you know. Yeah, then I saw him, you know flirting around and then romancing a few Wait, stewardesses. It's only Korean drama. It only happened in Korean drama, okay? It doesn't happen in Singapore drama. <laughs> okay, I believe you, I believe you. I shall not pursue anymore. So, five years as a crew and then, why why did you leave and become immigration? Um, I have to leave because of pregnancy. So, oh, did okay. FIA kick you out the moment you are pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> what? I need to call MOM tomorrow. <laughs> I thought you can be in corporate office or something. No, because we have too many cabin crew. We have like 8,000 crew, you know. So it's not oh. that you automatically granted to be a uh, ground crew. You right. have to apply and depending on the availability or is there any vacancy at that point. Yeah, so normally, right, you know, they will just terminate you. However, however, okay, you can go back to flying, okay? Right. So they have like a returning mother scheme dedicated for people who actually uh, became a mother and they are very uh, happy to go back flying. But of course, provided Eugene that you have to go back to your side. So that's why you see <laughs> now I have to actually... <laughs> wow, very good, very good. You're the real mother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have ever been fat, right? Other than pregnant, right? I've been fat before, yeah. Really? After la, After pregnancy la. I, Yes, I, I, I was. I, I think I struggled for uh, a few years to actually get back to my pre-pregnancy size. Yeah. Now your it's, son is how old? Uh, three years old. So, but now you are very slim, what? Which means only the first year la, Only the first year you struggled la. Maybe first year, yeah, about one to two years, I was struggling. I I think I lost a bit of I I, I did lost a bit of weight recently. Oh, because of circuit breaker. Because of uh. Same thing. I, I try to control uh, I try to. Control. Oh okay okay you're quite disciplined. Uh. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good for you. Okay, so the story is you were pregnant, mm, and good. then you had to leave. Yes, I had to leave. So. Yeah. Uh, the contract was kind of like ended, so uh, I was unemployed for for quite a while. Yeah, and one. no more than uh, I I would say one and a half years, almost one and a half. A long time. Yeah, it was quite a long time. Then I when my son turns about six months old, and I started job hunting again. Right, mm. So mm. I was actually actively searching for a sales role. Yes. That's my passion. Yeah. My passion is, I believe in the more effort you put, the more you're going to earn. So the sales yeah. role is more suitable for me. Good idea. Hey, but there are so many sales, you know, real estate, insurance. Why why, why immigration? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about last time, not now. You know, now you're already running a company. Yeah, not last time. Actually, I used to be an insurance advisor back in Malaysia. Maybe you're no idea. You have no idea, right? You got a shock. <laughs> yeah, 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 I got a shock. I got a shock. Yeah, for for about one year. Right. Yeah, well, I just graduated. So I tried uh to actually become an insurance consultant. So yes. I did quite well as well. But because of trying to pursue my dream, so I actually, you know, decided to come over to Singapore. Oh flying uh, your dream of flying. Yeah, that's right. So actually, the reason why I chose this industry is because um, I went through the same process as a lot of my clients. Oh. I was immigrants as well from Malaysia holding on to employment pass. Right. I truly, you know, understand the importance of having a residency status. And I went through the same process. So basically, I'm, I'm actually in the, in, the, in the same boat as my clients. So that's yeah. the reason why I ended up, you know, being a immigration consultant well okay so okay but but let's rewind and rewind i'm very capable one so uh, during the one and a half years of joblessness which really resonates with me because as you know i was jobless for yeah. nine months yeah yeah uh, I mean, nine months is the the good story la. actually it's longer than that because after you start company it was still broke for a few months right? 
right? Understand. Yeah, and you obviously didn't explore insurance uh, because you did it before. So you decided to cut it off, say, I don't want really. Then how about property? Right? I'm sure you do very well in property. Okay, because... <laughs> because <laughs> is that what I like about my industry, right, is yeah. that uh, we are a very, very clean cut and professional type of sales. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. I only need to meet my clients once to explain them about our service. Yes. And, um, you know, there, is, there isn't any recurring business. Right. So I don't really have to go all the way out to build rapport with my client, but I do uh-huh. build rapport. Yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. So that's the thing I love about my type of industry. Yes. Yeah. Very, very cleaner. It's like seeing doctor. You don't yeah. need to go out drinking, build rapport, go attend birthday party. Huh? <laughs> go drinking with your doctor, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah, you're right. Your, your kind of sales is closer to something like medical sales. Yes. Yeah. Whereas uh, my kind of sales, which I'm in the insurance line, will be more like uh, property insurance. Actually, mm-hmm. life coach is also in that line. You know, I have to build a whole lifetime of client rapport. Lah. You know, it's not like, oh, this time meet you once and bye-bye. Which I think, yeah, lah, I was purposely seeking for this kind of role. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like knowing someone for very long. <laughs> but for me, right, I really do find joy in helping my client. Do find joy in, joy in helping my clients to achieve their residency status. Uh, I really I do love that. what I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah I can see joy uh, exude from you on your YouTube video. Last time I was on your Facebook live also, but I was actually the person commenting rather than interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so tell me, uh, during COVID-19, okay, during COVID-19, a lot of companies suffer, right? Mm. Obviously. Yeah. But I see you just started renting an office. Right. Yeah. Like, like what what's <laughs> what's going on? Can you can share some secrets with us? Because there are a lot of entrepreneurs watching also. So I'm sure they want to learn like, hey, how does K manage to overcome such a hard period in our life? Mm, okay, so actually for for us, right? Okay, um, yes, we we did lose a few clients because mm-hmm. of retrenchment. Yes. And, uh, for us, right, we are very, very uh, actually sincere in doing this business and we want to run the business for a very long time. Yes. So for us, we, do, we did a lot of out-of-norm things as our competitors. Like our competitors are not doing something, but we are doing it. Example, we are giving like refund to our client whereby oh. they lose their job out of compassion eh? because we understand that yes. the difficulty they have after they lose their job and they are seeking a bit of, you know, refund because they are unable to proceed for the service. We understand yeah. that a lot of co- our competitors, right? Strictly, I'm sorry. The contract yeah. is no refund means no refund. I'm right. sorry. Yeah. But for us, right, we don't want to do that because we want to build a long-term relationship with our clients. Yes. Okay? And, and for us, right, I would say 70% of our business are referral. So oh. yes, I can't do your business, but it doesn't mean that you do not have anyone to refer to me, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, we did lost a few clients. Yes, we had like, you know, money that came out doing refunds and all this. But we also have clients which, you know, after they've seen how Singapore government uh, managed the entire pandemic situations, yes. very confident in our government. Right. And they are increasing uh, interest of people applying for PR for existing oh. pool of people. So, you right. know, uh, people who have been here for a very long time and they yeah. have had to think about applying for PR after all these circumstances and they think that, yeah, maybe it is the best place for me to live in. So they are applying for PR. So I think I have client come, I have client uh, go. So it's kind yeah. of balanced somehow and we are quite stable and that's how we can actually move into our own space. And I'm actually very, very thankful for a lot of my clients. They have been very supportive, okay? It's a new business, um, but they are very confident because of, you know, uh, because of us. So yeah. we're very thankful of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think some also like to meet uh, ex stewards. so... <laughs> 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 yeah, but, no, no, I'm just guessing. Uh, okay, so principle number one, okay, because I'm trying to draw principle for the rest of the audience, is that during COVID nineteen, where people are pulling back, you know, you are you all are giving even more, mm. right? So that's principle number one. 
Okay, can you share with us generously, let's say principle number two, so something you do with your leadership or teamwork or anything? Okay, actually, right, honestly, I am seeing like COVID as an opportunity for a small business like us to be on par with our big boys, you know, you yeah. know, big competitors in the in the industry because COVID is like an equalizer, right? And you see like you know, company with 100 years of uh, uh, experience, yeah. Robin, uh, Robinson, yeah. right? yeah. moving down. Yeah. Yeah. So, company which is very big and doing very well, right? Okay, they are suffering quite a lot yeah. compared with a smaller company. So, it's like an equalizer, it balances yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah. I think very good opportunities for a company, mm. small company with a very great mindset, okay? Yeah that your unique selling point compared with the rest of the competitors to actually yeah. make a brave move to differentiate yourself and you know make brave uh, decision to invest in marketing and that's how you can actually equalize yourself and maybe in the future we will cross the big boy uh, not maybe confirm, <laughs> confirm. <laughs> I have faith in you yeah thank you <laughs> But this reminds me, I, I used to run cross country uh, when I was 16. And mm. the, the best place to overtake people mm. is the slope. Yes. Yeah. So the COVID 19 is the slope. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, I, like, I like your attitude. Okay, so that's principle number two. Okay, whereby you see COVID 19 not as some tragedy or pandemic, mm. but as a great opportunity okay. and equalizer. Okay, just to make it a very round number, principle number three. You know, during COVID-19, how can people also behave like you, think like you, and succeed? How? Um, I think that um, every company must have a mindset, mindset to change. Ah, yes. That is actually very important. Mm. Oh, somebody wants Q&A. Hey, by the way, everybody watching right now, can ask questions, yeah. But as the host, I can decide whether to answer your question or not. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I saw like... Questions. Sorry? I saw like dictator. Yeah, yeah. Nick Nicholas Chong. Is that your friend, colleague, or... Yes. One of our no. partners, and we are working very closely together. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. No wonder he asked when is Q&A. Yeah. yeah. Anybody can ask. And, and as personal as possible. <laughs> I <laughs> ask personal Q and A. That's the best. I think that the third thing, like I mentioned, right, it's a mindset to change. You know, because uh, what I see is that I have a lot of very, very experienced uh, friends, and they are business owner, and they're doing very well in their industry. And sometimes they will be very hesitant to change because they think that they know the way to success, mm. but because you know, uh, the world changes so fast that we should be able to adapt yep. to what's happening. So I think that the true winner will be the one who is open yes. to different things, accept new ideas. So for me, right, I think one of the things that, you know, uh, we did very successful is that we always listen to our employees. We always listen to new people to actually see what are the ideas that they have. And we're very open to that instead of some people, you know, they're just yeah. very close. Yeah. You know, they close their mind. They think that, oh, I know the best, you know. I think this is very important. Yeah, for me, right, I always tell, you know, uh, my staff that, you know, if you have any idea, please tell us. I'm eager to listen. I'm eager to, you know, I'm, I'm open to whatever suggestion you have. Yeah. yeah. How, how old is your youngest one? Yeah, youngest. Oh, oh man, I don't want to talk about it because it will ex <laughs> expose my... Yeah. <laughs> my youngest in, in the company is like 24, 25. Oh, young. Yeah. Okay. So young. <laughs> uh, 24 is millennial, is it? Can't, can't, I lost track. Millennial or strawberry, anyway. So <laughs> when he or she gives suggestion, if it's a large company, usually they will say like, you know, uh, talk to my hand. Or, or like noted yeah but for you you will say oh tell me more you know let's brainstorm and then let, let's experiment correct yeah, yeah. hey Jess, uh, Jess it's such a joy to see you we met once in April 27 oh April 2007 baby events oh man wow. that was so long ago and then she said you have changed a lot looks great wow 
Okay, I would love to see your photo in April 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I look the same but with shorter hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was telling you, uh, your BNI photo has short hair, right? Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I can change a lot, like, I believe, yeah, three years ago from now on. Yeah, I three, three years, yeah. change a lot. I, I, one year change a lot also. <laughs> I, I, gained, I gained 12 kg in one year, yeah. <laughs> That's another story for another day. <laughs> Okay, okay, good, good. Now we find out more about why you became an uh, immigration consultant and we also learned from you some adventures when you were serving in Singapore Airlines, which, uh, to be honest, not very juicy. Lah. Yeah, quite disappointing. Yeah, I know, never mind. <laughs> juicy news you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know because I'm only a passenger. Yeah. Uh, but now I don't worry. Okay, now I want to look at uh, the overall life, overall. So you were in uh, which part of Malaysia? You, you can share, right? I'm from KL. Oh, KL. It is a big city, what? Yeah. So you were saying you were from a below average family, right? Um, yeah. A lot of people think that, oh, you're from KL, you must be very rich. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No. Ah. No. <laughs> okay. yeah, I actually stayed in uh, those government flat in Malaysia. And the government flat... It's very different from Singapore, you know. So, huh. you know, I'm staying in HDB right now, huh. you know, very comfortable, very nice. I yeah. we bought, but in Malaysia, right, you can't buy, you can't buy the government flat. It's, so every month you pay something. Yes, it's made. It's dedicated for below average family with oh. below three thousand ringgits, and you can actually get a, a government flat rented. Yeah, and you can't buy. Combined income of below 3,000 ringgit per mm -hmm. month. Wow. Yeah. And then the uh, family was how big? Your father, your mother, you and your sister? Yeah, uh, family of five. So I have two younger sisters. Oh, you have two younger sisters? You're the Jie. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You, you, like give me feeling, yeah, yeah, you give me feeling like Xiao Mei, you know? No! <laughs> okay, okay, you're Jie. Okay, okay. You don't know me well enough. <laughs> okay, I need to reframe my mind. Okay, Da Jie, Da Jie, Da Jie. Okay. <laughs> So you, uh, okay, can you describe a little bit? Because, I mean, I wasn't from a very rich family myself, but mm -hmm. how, how does a uh, below average family in KL live? I mean, is there anything that other children would have that you, you didn't have? Okay, honestly, right, um, a lot of people think Singapore is very expensive. But yes. if you compare dollar to dollar, right, it's actually quite okay, you know, compared with KL. Oh. So KL is actually very expensive. So if let's say your household income is below three thousand ringgit, right? Yes. You're gonna be you're gonna be having a hard time to survive in Malaysia because right now if you go out, you know, just to have a normal rice, chicken yeah. rice or something, right? Okay, you are expecting to pay about ten ringgit oh, with wow. rings. Yeah. So it's actually not easy to survive with three thousand ringgit. Yeah, that's right. So um I would say um ha being in, in a below average family, right? It makes me uh wonder like you know what I can do to actually change my family life. So that's the reason why I ended up in, working in Singapore. Oh. My only vision is to actually make my family life better. Oh that, that was your strong motivation to leave KL. La. Yeah, that's right. But that, that's really very touching. Yeah. I mean I, I've never experienced that before. Uh but I, I watch movies about it, you know. People leave parts of China, parts of Malaysia, and to create a better life. And then in the process they go through hardship, right? <clears throat> like people bully them, people misunderstand them. Like just today I got a friend who actually came from India. Uh, with the mother still in India, who is uh, like very old, but cannot go back and visit, right? So, so things like that, because the moment your family is apart, then of course, you go through heartaches. Uh. Yeah. Actually, it's not easy, especially for a girl to be here alone without the family, because we are quite emotional, right? So they are periods whereby I find that oh I'm I'm quite alone here when I'm when I'm sick there's no one take care of me whereby if I'm in my home country you know I'll be so well taken care of by my mom but mm. you know we just have to suck thumb and and go through <laughs> because you know we 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 want to make life different for our family so we have to go through this. Okay during this entire journey where you left your home mm. and you know as a stewardess as well and all that 
what was the most difficult part of this whole journey after leaving Malaysia? I would say emotionally is quite tough because like I mentioned, right? Um, and, and one thing about our industry is that on every flight, right? You get, you, you're flying with different uh, crew. Mm. So you, you can't really build a very uh, deep relationship. Yep with a friendship with someone so uh, everyone is just like hi bye type of friends yeah it's not that you know uh we are not keen to develop a really deep friendship but it's just because of the situation it doesn't allow us but when we come back from flight right okay yes we we had a really good flight together so we try to arrange for you know session going out but after that everyone's schedule start to be very very different Mm. we've gone to different places so it's very hard to arrange so i think my biggest challenge is that i really i I was like i I can't get any true friends you know so it's actually quite it's a lonely journey and and at some point of time whereby you just want to go out for a meal and you have no one to to think like who should I go makan with, right? Okay, uh, uh, it's quite, yeah, it's quite tough for girls. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? No, and I don't use Tinder. I know people say that you can just go up to some. <laughs> that one, uh, not not appropriate. Not appropriate. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you did find a boyfriend and husband, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and that was done using Tinder, I assume. Oh no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, did you cry before? Like during your five years students, you felt so lonely. You started crying. Yeah. Once or twice, or like quite quite often. I'm a very emotional person, and I cried very easily. Yeah, but uh, crying doesn't mean that you're weak. Yes. And it's yes. a thing that I need to clarify. Crying doesn't mean that you're weak. Mm. So after I cry, you know, I wipe my tears, and then life goes on, and I have to go out and start fighting again. Same as me, same as me. I cry a lot, yeah. Really? <laughs> really, really, yeah. You see, you don't know me very well, yeah. <laughs> I, I cry a lot. Uh, uh, I, I watch Disney shows, you know, all the Disney shows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in theatre. And in the darkness, I'll start crying. <laughs> but I remember Little Mermaid, I cried a lot. Little Mermaid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Toy Story. Do you watch Toy Story? Yes, I cry. Toy Story. Yeah. Mm. And and wow, the third one I really wow, yeah because frozen, frozen. <laughs> oh yeah frozen also I cried. okay that was my okay that, <laughs> very embarrassing yeah but crying does not mean we are weak yeah I fully agree yeah so That's during your using my emotional yeah it's healthy it's healthy you know it, it stops all the mental stress from being inside it just comes outside you know all the energy is carried in our tears and we start to feel better, lighter. Mm. Yeah. So during your very dark nights where you feel very lonely, very sad, what kind of philosophy do you have that helps you overcome and press on? You know, you could have given up and said, ah, just go back to KL. Right? But, but what made you press on? I always remember what's the reason I came to Singapore. To provide a better life for your family. Yes. And wow. I haven't achieved my goal yet and I can't give up like this. Wow, but your goal must be very big. No? Right? <laughs> your goal must be very big. No, right. just a proper home. Yeah. Which actually, I, I actually bought a house for my family this year. So it's achieved already? Lah. Yeah, it's achieved. Yeah, right oh, now I have right. different goals. Oh, you, you already changed your goal? We have to have different goals in our life when we achieve this. So we set the next next goal so our life will keep you know, uh, motivated to move forward. Yeah. Your, your Mimi must look up to you a lot, right? Because they are still in KL. Yes, they are still in KL. Did they want to follow your route, like become a stewardess? And... I, I don't want them to follow my route. Oh, really? I want them to have a very comfortable life, be happy as possible. Yeah, so I actually jokingly tell my sister that, you know what, you should get married to a rich person and that's it. <laughs> hey, that is lousy advice. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, my, my company is doing life coaching and we are, we believe in women empowerment. Mm. Although I'm not a woman, yeah. I, I would love women to, and, and this is for you, I'm not trying to joke here, that women should be very uh, strong, mentally strong, independent, financially uh, stable. And when they fall in love with another man or all that, of course it's good, you know, for the, for the emotional union. Yeah, but financially it should still be 
the, the woman is independent. Uh. You know, imagine if your sisters really go and marry a rich man, <laughs> then the man, you know, can anything happen? What? You never know. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. But for me, I think that women being a woman, right, no matter how strong we are, at a certain point of time, you know, we just want to rely on someone. Yes, to be yeah. yeah, sometimes I do think about this also. So yeah. if, let's say, you know, my sister able to find someone which yeah. are very willing to take care of them for the rest of their life, being yeah. very nice, I was like, why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? You know, but yeah, yeah. you have to know your value. You know, you have to have backup plan. What if this doesn't work out? What what you have to do? Yeah, yeah have to sign legal contract before they get married for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the only one who left KL in your whole mm. family. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Actually, right. I just feel that your sisters can actually. Yeah, they're, they're not married yet, right? No, they're not. Uh, yeah, so it is time after COVID nineteen, come to Singapore, explore. <laughs> Uncle Eugene, bring you around. It's Saturday. <laughs> I want to start a, like a you know dating business. Yeah, probably I can actually introduce them. And I'm sure you can start a subsidiary, <laughs> right? Because mostly are married people who go through immigration consulting, right? Any any singles? Hey, they are actually there are a lot of they are single, they are family also. Yeah. Hey, perfect. For those who are singles, you funnel them. Yeah, to a subsidiary. <laughs> I consider that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of I stabilize my business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can think of other things. I got a lot of crazy ideas. Huh? Yeah, we, we need to meet for coffee and I'll share with you all these crazy ideas. <laughs> hey, oh, so so far, uh, 10 47 already. Okay, K. Thank you for coming on the show. Before we end, can you give us something that is from your heart? You know, anything you want to say to your fans and your friends and or your fr- frenemies, <laughs> anybody? You know, what will be a parting comment? A, I think that, uh, you know, I want to tell you, uh, everyone the stories about um, there was this uh, um, real story happening whereby they interviewed a drug addict in the prison and asked them like, how did you end up here? So what happened? So he was saying that, oh, you know what? Because my my dad is a drug addict, my mom is a drug addict, so that's why I ended up here. Right, and then they interviewed the brother, which become a very successful man actually. So they interviewed the brother. So how do you end up become becoming so successful? And he said that, oh, my mom is a drug addict, my dad is a drug addict. So I know that I cannot follow their route. I have to be very different, and I don't want to follow their footstep. So actually, what I want to tell is, um, basically, it's actually one of my tattoo here, as you can see, right? Okay, so and- tattoo here, right? Okay, it has two meaning to this. So the first meaning is that you know, uh, you can view it as a broken infinity. Oh, broken infinity. So right. which means like nothing lasts forever. So if you take a look at. Uh, a situation in a very bad angle like oh yeah nothing lasts forever yeah that's it right but it can also means that you know an end which means it's not the end yet right so you you can always you know think about another way to you you know so depending on your perspective towards certain situation it determines your mindset you see so my my belief is that yes, regardless of what situation you're in, yes, you come you came from a very difficult difficult family like myself, you know. Uh actually I've been always uh uh envisioned to actually have uh you know learn a lot of skill sets like oh I wanna learn music, but I'm unfortunately my family doesn't allow me. So yeah. what what do I want to do about this, right? It really in in here, right? Okay. Yeah. So for me, is very important on how you perceive certain things so i want to encourage people who think that oh uh you know i come from below average family and that's it you know that's not how you should think about it yeah you should try your very best to actually change mm-hmm. so perspective is very important well i love this story i heard it before mm. it, it really is a good uh, reminder for all of us every time we want to blame something like our circumstances, blame COVID, blame our disability, blame our low IQ, blame our school, you know, blame whatever. 
you know, some a lot like to blame their spouse for everything <laughs> that happens to them. <laughs> yeah, or, or bl- blame parenting, blame motherhood. Like, oh, you know, if only I don't have children, then I will be able to be more successful. And all these are very loser type of attitude, in, in my oh, opinion. Yeah. You know, uh, forgive yeah. me if any of the people watching us now yeah. have this loser attitude. La. Yeah, but I'm still going to stand by my word. It's a very loser attitude. And the uh, champion attitude is what Kay just shared, which is, never mind, you know, my, my parents are drug addicts, but that's why I decided I don't want to be like them. You know, that's why I became a successful person. And, you know, Kay, you remind me also, <clears throat> it is not about just proving people wrong. Because some some very powerful women like to prove people wrong, which mm. is actually not a very positive uh, motivation. But for you, it is to provide a better life for your family, for your younger sisters. And, and that really moves me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kay. Very for nice of you. Yeah. So everyone, please connect with Kay for those who are not Kay's friend yet. Yeah. I'm sure you accept friends, right, on, on uh, Facebook. Right. Yes, I still have some quota left. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> very good, very good. So uh, please join uh, Kay and also uh, look out. I- I'm going to share your link, Immigration yes. People. Uh, and you have a YouTube channel, I believe. Yeah. Yes, I do. Please uh, subscribe my channel if you haven't. I subscribe already. I subscribe already. Ah, did you subscribe to mine? Mm, mm, mm. Yes, I did. Okay, okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We must support each other. Oh, Yulia. Who's Yulia? Yulia is my friend. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Yulia. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, but it says already come to an end, but you can actually watch a replay. Uh, can watch, can watch. <laughs> you got a lot of friends who are who look like as to others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Yulia is very pretty and she can pull off as a cabin crew for sure. Wow, very good, very good. I need to hang around with you more often. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Have a good rest. Go and cuddle your son. Uh, say, say hi to him for me. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Eugene. It's a pleasure. Thank you.